What is good guys, back with another smoke on the snake draft game, this time with uh, the name versus Batman fee. And I think Batman is just gonna go to his Ferrothorn here because we have Coco versus Coco lead. The thing is, he kinda has to fear this uh, Coco being. Zinane has a Gyarados, which is most likely Sky Strike because his Lottie should be Mega. And Sky Strike Gyarados, um, after it wasted Z move, is kinda walled by Ferrothorn. So I do think that Zinane is gonna have some type of lure for Ferrothorn. Either HP Fire on the Lottie, on the Coco, or maybe Fire Punch on the Bantar. Something along those lines, is what I'm expecting. But he just went for Specs Dazzling Gleam, I'm pretty sure that's Specs Damage. And Ben Manaphy is gonna get up his rocks here. I do think that this is a rocks uh, Ferrothorn and the Fable is a Calm Mind variant. And the Coco could be Z move or Specs on Ben Mana's side. He has a default Mantan, which makes me think there's a chance that this only has rocks. His team, he might not have Spikes, but it could also be Double Hazards Ferrothorn, we don't know that yet. And the Magnezone, um. I'm not really sure about the Magnezone, it could be AV, it could also be Z-Move, but yeah, the name sh uh, is gonna switch here. If he has Fire Punch, he could go into T-Tar, or otherwise he could go into his Ladi here. Um, maybe bluff the HP Fire and potentially defog the Hazards away as Ben Mana just gets up his rocks. So um, this should definitely be Mega Ladi. And Tita should be Banner and Gyarados should be Z-Move and Lando should be Scarf. I think Lando is Scarf on both sides. So Bamana should go for like Leech Seed. Oh, he has Spikes. Okay. So he does have Rocks and Spikes and maybe he has Knockoff and Power and he doesn't have Leech Seed on his Ferrothorn, which is a really weird set. But yeah, Z-Name doesn't really do gain much by staying in because Defog has less BP than Rocks. And he also has uh, Rocks and Spikes. So he's always going to keep Hazards up anyway in the long run. And I guess he does not have Leech Seed. So, um... He's just gonna spam spikes and rocks for a while here. Zinane is eventually gonna have to switch out because this just doesn't get him anywhere if he stays in with the Lottie. <laughs> um, so I think Batman is just either gonna spike or rock again. Oh, he does switch out into Clefable on the, on the Ice Beam. So I'm expecting this um, Lottie to switch out as he obviously doesn't want to take a Moonblast. And he comments up, um, but he doesn't want to get knocked off on his Clefable. So he could switch into his Magnezone here, that would cover... Why would he T-Wave there? I don't get that play. Um, he has a sub Magnezone, so he does prevent Lichi, that's fire for him. So he's most likely Z-Move, so he's probably Gigavolt Havoc or Corkscrew Crash. Let me think. I think Corkscrew Crash is cool to get rid of Landris. But he's not really weak to land if he has specs Coco with HP eyes. Actually his Coco doesn't have to speed doesn't have to be specs, we don't know that yet. But yeah, Zinane does go into his Coco. He's most likely gonna volt switch out to break the sub. And he's either gonna go to land or Ladi here, depending on Yeah, Ladi was the better play because Ladi takes anything that Magnuson wants to do. There's no point in risking your land on a flash can when Ladi has really good bulk, he's just gonna recover, I think. T bolt, okay. And when Batmana gets up spikes, which he's gonna do here most likely, oh he power whips. Um, I thought he was gonna get up spikes to force Xena in the defog, but he doesn't do that. So he does go on a Clefable. Since this Lottie is, um, has Levitate, it does not get Electric Terrain boost, so the t did nothing even with a crit, so he should just softball up. As the Ferrothorn is gonna come out, or the Magnezone here. Actually, the terrain ended. He can just stay in because the terrain ended. So you can just Moonblast or Softball here because of there's no there's no electric terrain, which means um, Coco's electric moves are not that strong. That's the main reason why Coco is that good because of electric terrain because its special attack is otherwise really poor. Like it's not that great. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, that was probably bad English, my bad guys. But yeah, he goes hard in the Bantar, he's gonna fire off a Stone Age here. Um, he should definitely keep the Clefable because it's really great. Lando's gonna take like 70 if it's offensive, or he crunches instead of edging. Um, fearing the, the Pharaoh or the, the Zone to come out, I guess, but I would've edged there, I think. Just because of the, th the threat of the Clefable in case he stayed in. And it does more to, to Lando as well. As I think Lando's just gonna U-turn out here. And Zinane is most likely gonna go to his own Lando or to his Lottie. He does go to his own Landris, which should be... I think both Landers should be Scarved. That is 8. Um, I, don't, I think that's offensive damage with like a low roll. So he can now go in his Clef or his Coco. Why would he go Coco? Is he like... He is a Scarf Landris, so unless he has something... Unless he's gonna switch to Scout for the Lando being Scarf. 
Oh, he scarfed Coco. That's a really odd play, otherwise. Huh? I don't think he scarfed Coco. He's either gonna switch out scouting for scarf Lando, or he has a berry that resists Lando's move. Not sure. But Ban Mana brought us out really confident, so I'm pretty sure he's gonna HP Icy with his Coco, or he's gonna go back to um, Lando or Mantine scouting for this Lando being scarfed into Earthquake. But the main reason why you would make this play is, unless you want to pivot back into one of the flying types on the Earthquake, is you have you either scarf or you have um, sugar or what's the name of the berry? I think it's sugar. That's like the main reason you would make that play. So depending on his set, he's gonna HP ice if he has the berry. He, otherwise, he's gonna switch back out and he does have sugar and he's gonna HP ice here, right? And it should kill because it's offensive land. Mm -hmm. And now he can go into his Coco and. He can just click electric move here, I guess. Or volt switch. Um, if he has HP fire, that's also an option. He did not click at turn 1, which was... A, I was really surprised that he did not click HP fire at turn 1 if he has it. Like I said, I'm expecting some sort of lure for it to, to support the Gyarados. Um, that was... Like, if he has HP fire, I think he should have clicked at turn 1, because Ban Mana was not gonna risk his Coco on the... Like, on the speed tie loss when he has a Pharaoh in the back. And Xenan, like Xenan couldn't really go to his Pharaoh because of Ban Mana having a Magnezone in the back. So like Ban Mana kind of had matchup advantage as well in in the in the um, Coco versus Pharaohthon scenario. With that he cannot really Xenan cannot really go into his Pharaoh on the opposing Coco because there's a zone in the back and it can be easily punished by a double. So he goes hard in the co in the Landris and we do see it as HP Fire Coco. So he did not want to risk his Pharaohthon, which was smart. Um, I guess he covered that covered the electric move the the Landris. And it covered um, scouting for him power fire. And we do see it scarf U turns out, and he can now go into his Clefable or his Mantine, knowing that the Coco is locked into HP fire. It has to be HP fire because it's not ice. That's the only other thing you would run. It makes sense because I already talked about it earlier, right? It makes sense to support the Gyarados. It does go into Mantine, knowing that the Coco is locked into Specs HP fire, and the Mantine can just either defog the rocks away or fire off a Scald here. As I assume we're gonna see a switch into Megalodi because um, he already revealed T Bolt, um, he is Bolt B Megalodi. Mantan doesn't really do much in this game, so I guess he's just gonna defog. He does go and T Tapered in Defog slash. Maybe he could have. I think he would have been able to live a skull with the Sandstorm's Death Boost. So now he can just Stone Edge again. Um, early I crunched, but I would have edged early as well. Because um, I don't think Bad Mana was gonna switch out, fearing the pursuit. Slash, like I said, Mantan wasn't gonna do much this game. Uh, Ladi has T Bolt, Coco has T Bolt. Gyarados can set up on Mantan if it has like substitute or. Like Mantan basically has to hope for Scald Burns versus Gyarados, and if Gyarados has sub, that also doesn't work. I guess if Mantan had haste, it could potentially prevent the Gear from setting up, but the Gyarados could also be taunt. And it also it obviously loses to Tita, Coco, and Ladi. So that was not really a point in keeping it. So now he gets Lando, he can just U turn out. U turn should kill the Tita, which is why he switches into Coco, knowing that the U turn is coming. Coco resists the U turn. But now he can just go to his um, Magnezone or his own Coco. I forgot how healthy the Magnezone was. He goes to Ferrothorn, which is odd because he knows that the Coco has HP Fire. Maybe he's gonna try to pivot into Clefable uh, on HP Fire. Or he's just... I, I guess HP Fire probably doesn't kill because Ferrothorn runs to death. So maybe Ben Manaphy, knowing that, is just gonna go for Power Whip. But, nah, I don't think that's a smart play. I think he's gonna switch, yeah. I think he's gonna switch. Because I would definitely keep the Pharaohs unhealthy for the Gyarados. Um, I would switch into... Probably Clefable or maybe Landorus. I guess he went into this to get some extra leftovers, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. So he turned into Pharaoh to get his lefties and you now he's gonna pivot back. There is a chance that Xenan is gonna click Electric Move, so I'm not sure if Clefable is the play, because Clefable does kinda win the game, exactly. Clefable does kind of win the game, which is why I would not have risked it. He goes on the Scarf line instead and sucks it off, and it would have also covered um, Coco going for an Electric Move. Now he knows that Coco is locked on the HP Fire, and he can just click Moonblast, or he has T-Wave, okay. <laughs> so his T-Wave, Calmind, Softball, and Moonblast, and his Pharaoh on his Double Hazard without Leech Seed, really interesting. Not a fan um, of Pharaoh without Leech Seed. Because like that's the main way that Ferrothorn stays healthy, especially with the burn nerf. Ferrothorn, even if it gets burned, can stay easily healthy with Leech Seed, and I'm a big fan of having Leech Seed on that. But now he can just... I think Xenan is gonna switch, because Moonblast should kill, since there's no Sandstorm, so he does sack off his Coco. 
Um, Tita would live, I think, a Moonblast when a Sandstorm is up because it gets a Spideff boost, but without it wouldn't have lived. So now he's gonna go to Gyarados. Um, because Lari does not beat the Clef. And the Tita would get T waved. And uh, if she gets the Tita, might, it might be a roll with Edge. But yeah, Tita wasn't the play because he also has like checks for that in the back. So now, if I'm bad mana here, I would either Moonblast or would switch hard into um, in the Feral Thorn uh, slash. Yeah, Hot Pharaoh or Moonblast, because the Gyarados um, exactly might have Taunt or Substitute, so I don't know why, he tried to Substitute T-Wave him, that was an odd play, because either Sub or Taunt was pretty obvious in my opinion. The Gyarados so is most likely DD, Taunt, um, Bounce and Waterfall, which means it doesn't have Earthquake. So after it raised its Sky Strike, um, I mean it doesn't really play a role that if it had Earthquake or not, but after it wastes the Sky Strike, the Ferrothorn is going to be able to check this Gyarados pretty well. So the dra he's going to Dragon Dance again here, and I think Ban Mana is just going to Moonblast because he does want more damage on Gyarados. Because if he gets more damage on Gyarados, Knock Off into Iron Bubs from Ferrothorn might kill the Gyarados and he does not have to risk missing a power whip so now the z move is really obvious because the z move would kill the clef at plus two so i guess bad mana is gonna sack his coco here uh the nan could potentially predict that and dragon dance again but the thing is i think Zenan is kind of forced to attack because if he does not z if he dds again and the clef stays in his gyarados just dies and he just straight out loses the game here but i think it's pretty smart for bad mana to save the clef so uh, ddding again is definitely a potential play and that might put Zenan in a great position if he did this again and then that means he still has a Z move and can threaten the Ferrothorn with that that would be amazing for him but I guess it's a 50-50 kind of um, I think it's slightly in Ban Man if he's favor because just like I said if Zenan gets this wrong he just straight out loses so he has kind of some pressure to go for the Z move because um, regular waterfall would not kill the Clefable because Clefable runs max defense in Sun Moon OU. Sometimes they run a little bit of speed investment, so speed creep. Um, I forgot for which one actually. I guess for opposing Clef and for. There's like some other slow mons that you can creep with Clef. I just forgot which ones. But most likely he's gonna sack his, his Coco here. Um, let's see if he did this again. So there's a Coco sack and he does he move. So that mana got the play correct. And now you can just go to Ferrothorn and click Knock Off. Because like I said, you don't have to risk missing Power Whip. That's why he Moonblasted the Gyarados twice. So um, now Power Whip in the Iron Bob should be able to kill the Gyarados. And since the Gyarados does not have Earthquake, that's why it plays a role that he doesn't have Earthquake. He does not have a move that does... He only has contact moves, which means when he bounces the Ferrothorn, he takes Iron Bobs as he does rock up on the bounce. <laughs> and now he can just click Knock Off. Because um, Iron Bob's into knockoff should kill the Gyarados. And if it doesn't kill, okay, it doesn't kill him. But it too, it kills the Gyarados, is what I meant. Okay, that's okay. That was a little error, but you can see. The, exactly, that's what I meant. Bounce cannot Oko Ferrothon, so he has to hit the Ferrothon twice. And by spamming knockoff, you cannot miss, which means the Gyarados cannot DD again, because if the Gyarados DD is again, it dies to knockoff. And if the Gyarados attacks, it dies to Iron Bob, so Ban Mana has him in a checkmate position. If he did it again on the Coco Sack, this would've, you would've, this would've been a different scenario, and it would've been a really interesting endgame. But the miss doesn't matter, he would've died, uh, it would've been a double down. I think Clefable wins at this point. Um, was the Tita T-waved already? I don't remember if the Tita was T-waved. So... Lichi would be nice in this scenario, but we already know he most likely doesn't. No, I think he removed his entire moveset. He does not have T Wave. So he does just go Clef. He has to fear. So Batmana has to fear getting frozen. Um, so I guess he might Calm Mind once and then spam Moonblast. And because if you don't Calm Mind, Moonblast doesn't do that much. So now you just spam Moonblast and hope you don't get frozen. And because I think the Tita was really low on Parrot, if I recall correctly. So the t so the health on Clef doesn't matter, you just have to kill the Lari, which he does do here, and the Tita is paralyzed so, and is slower, obviously, so he should just be able to Moonblast that and obviously kill that plus one. And this is, this is the game. Um, I will be back with more content. Um, thank you guys for watching, hope you all enjoyed. Um, yeah, I feel like this was a wall of... Yeah, like there were some interesting sets that you don't usually see, like sub Magnezone. Um, it did not reveal the Z move, but I assume it was Z move Magnezone. And the Coco was um, Shuka, which is really interesting as a fire set. But yeah, see you guys next time. Have a fantastic day, and goodbye.